Okay, so I've literally attended one divorce party in my life. This girl, she threw a party after she left an abusive relationship. She was putting up with a lot of domestic violence for many, many years. When she finally escaped it, she threw a divorce party. When I tell you the vibe of that party was like really, really off, okay? It was very interesting. So within that party, there were quite a few people that seemed genuinely happy for her. But if you looked around the room, there were a lot of people side-eyeing each other, whispering. I don't know why they were there. I mean, it was obvious that they were there because they wanted to save face and like not seem like they weren't cool or something like that. They just didn't want to say out loud that they didn't support this person. So I thought the vibes were really weird and I couldn't seem to understand it. So I wanted to do a deep dive on why today in modern America, okay, divorce is still very much taboo within South Asian culture. Hi everybody, what's going on? My name is Yusra. Welcome to my channel. And here we talk about feminism, dating and relationship dynamics, South Asian culture, culture in general, lots of things. So if that's the sort of stuff that you're into, uh, let's chat. The year is 2023 and divorce is still very much stigmatized in South Asian society. I mean, in a culture where families will literally use up their entire life savings to throw the most ridiculous and lavish freaking weddings of the century, it's almost like everything is leading up to this moment, right? It's like, it's supposed to be a finale. Weddings are supposed to be this end game. Like in a Disney movie where everybody's like, ah, and they lived happily ever after. Well, it's crazy because that same wedding is gonna be going on and in that same wedding the couple that's getting married they've already become old news and the aunties out here are already looking for their next target their next poor unlucky single person victim that they're gonna trap you know or try to trap you know that same night and i just think that's like crazy this obsession with marriage and the truth of the matter is that marriage isn't really a finale is it for the two people involved that have already become old news well their life is just now starting when it comes to marriage, a lot of the times things work out, but a lot of the times things don't. And when the latter happens in our society, it's just not something, it's not a reality that anybody wants to accept. And things get messy and shit hits the fan whenever the matter of divorce comes up in our culture. So in my last video, I talked about how in South Asian culture, family or the concept of family and obedience to the point where it's very much important to suppress your personal desires. But what I didn't cover in the last video is the fact that while this is expected from both genders, it's obvious that it's much more highly expected from the girls than it is from the boys. Now, unfortunately, historically, daughters have been viewed as essentially burdens for families and society in general. Burdens to such an extreme that female infanticide was at one point practiced throughout the world. In 1978, for example, anthropologist Layla Williamson found that infanticide had occurred on every continent and was carried out by groups ranging from hunter-gatherers to highly developed societies. Now, in an almost obvious extension, Female infanticide is also closely linked to a lack of education and high poverty rates, which explains why it is widely prevalent in locations such as India, Pakistan, and West Africa. Doing some further reading, I actually found out that Confucius called women money-losing merchandise because the entirety of a daughter's life, the families would spend feeding her and raising her, and then they would have to also generate money for dowry when she would get married. This is all like insanity to me, okay? Because in a world where education was not even promoted for girls, you cut off their legs, you make them handicapped so they can't fend for themselves, can't make money for themselves, have no wealth or ability to generate any income, right? And then you turn back around and call them money losing merchandise. Makes a lot of sense, Confucius. The focus of a girl's life has never been education or independence or financial autonomy or anything like that, right? It's always been about being subservient, okay? When a girl's young, it's about being obedient and loyal to your parents. And then afterwards, that burden or that responsibility for the girl now transfers to her new family or her husband. For centuries, it's been like a freaking transaction. It's just honestly ridiculous. A while 
ago, there was this very ridiculous uh, image circulating where there was a picture of a, of a lollipop, okay? And there was one that was covered and then there was one that was open. And the one that was open had insects on it or like ants or something on it, right? And literally, the message for who was spreading this was like, oh, if you're a woman that does not wear the hijab, you're actually number two. That's right, infested by ants, okay? And in that case, the ants would be men, right? Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that women have always been associated with honor. The feminine honor code emphasizes values such as chastity and conformity. The central idea in the feminine honor code is sexual purity, modesty, decorum in dress, and discretion in social relationships, particularly with men, or inhibit choice of marriage partner. Inhibit, okay? Not being able to live up to such responsibility translates into a perceived loss of masculinity for male relatives, and this may result in very severe punishments for women. Loss of male masculinity as a consequence, right, versus severe punishment for women. So the stakes are not the same, are they? Women may feel pressure to be obedient their entire lives, and so it becomes very, very difficult to leave a toxic, miserable marriage. So I recently came across this concept, something called the invisible divorce. And essentially what an invisible divorce is, is that two people in a relationship have essentially given up on the idea of making their relationship work. So they're continuing to live together as roommates, essentially, right? Um, they don't really love each other anymore. There's no intimacy there. There's no friendship there. There's literally no relationship there. But because society puts so much pressure on them to keep going and to not get a divorce, they'd stay in their relationship on the surface. Can you imagine waking up every day of your life next to a person you know you don't love and you know they don't love you, but because society's put so much fear in you, you'd rather live like that than be shunned by society, which I feel is just crazy. On top of this, ChatGPT told me that the divorce rate in India as well as Pakistan is very close to 1%, while that of the United States is actually 39%. Are you telling me that people in India and Pakistan are that much more in love with their partners? I mean, it's possible, but I highly doubt it. And even within the US, Divorce rates for Asian women sit at the lowest at around 11% compared to white women at 19%, Hispanic women at 22%, and African American women at 33%. Forget about the societal burdens and being shunned and all that for a second. There's a lot more dangerous reasons as to why women actually can't leave uh, marriages. And it's essentially because a lot of women actually fear um, violence at the hands of their partners. I could go on to provide numerous case studies um, on victims. Just There's just so much out there that's just very, very traumatizing and depressing and scary for that matter. But um, out of respect for some of the victims out there, and I, I really don't want to talk about specifics here, but there's quite a few that have been facing either physical or mental abuse at the hands of their partners. And so imagine trying to leave that sort of a situation. It, it can't be easy. I personally know an auntie who got divorced um, a lot later on in her life. She basically told me that she had been trying to get a divorce for decades, for over two decades, but every single time she would try, her own brothers would essentially stop her. There was one brother in specific that actually threatened her and said that if she ever took that step to get a divorce, he would be the one to take her life. Now, it got to the point where many, many years passed by, she tried a few times, and then finally she literally said, you know what, I'm going to risk this. And so she risked her life and got a divorce. Thankfully, um, you know, that brother did not act on his words. Um, he deserves to be in the pits of hell, but for now, jail would be acceptable. I digress. She's the happiest that she's ever been. But why did it take over two decades for her to be free of that horrible situation that she was in? Wherever a woman is financially dependent on her husband, it becomes much more difficult to leave, right? As historically, education has not been prioritized for women, and as such, they don't have incomes and wealth of their own. How are they supposed to go out into the world and survive just practical terms, right? Who's supposed to pay the bills for them? And what happens if they actually have kids to take care of, right? It's not like she can go back to her family and they would give her the support that she would need in order to make it happen, right? At least in a lot of cases. 
speak from a guy's perspective because I'm not really a guy. <laughs> But, you know, I acknowledge the fact that it would be hard for them to right? For emotional reasons. At the same time, I do have to say that society does favor men over women. It is what it is. While it would be very hard for a guy in terms of an emotional standpoint, and also, uh, of course, from a societal standpoint, you know, the financial reasons aren't there, the fear of violence isn't there. I, I want to tell you guys something, okay? I know this one guy, all right? He got a divorce and two weeks after he got a divorce, his family and society and there was a matchmaker, they were already looking for another girl for her two weeks, two weeks after his divorce. Okay, it was insanity. While at the same time, the girl that he had gotten divorced from was considered untouchable. Okay, untouchable. So I'm just saying that society does favor men and it is easier for you guys out there. So But I do acknowledge your um, emotional hurt. Now, going back to my friend, the girl that threw the divorce party, I judge every single person, okay, in that party that was judging her and side eyeing her and like giving her shade. She was celebrating that night after years of putting up with somebody that was giving her hell. She made it out with her life intact, overcoming societal pressures, okay? And thank God for her being financially independent so that she could actually make this a reality. There is so much social stigma around the concept of divorce in South Asian culture that I literally applaud anybody who has overcome that and has been on the other side and is now free and enjoying and living their best life, okay? And tell me why, again, there's this massive obsession with marriage to begin with, right? It's like, what if I have other personal goals um, in my life, right? No, just get married, okay? Everything else will come after. The obsession of marriage is one of the reasons why when it unravels, it's so much more taboo. Please don't misconstrue this video into thinking that I'm trying to promote divorce, okay? Because I'm not. Divorce rates are already going up in South Asian society. Of course, compared to like other demographics, obviously very, very low still. But overall, they are going up with time, as is education for women over time. But honestly, this is very, very fresh and very, very new, okay? My parents, that generation, they were still going through all the stuff that I talked about previously. And the newer and fresher concepts at least are now seeping into like first, maybe second generation immigrants. And so what I'm trying to promote here is the empowerment of women, okay? Making sure that because for centuries women were considered as money losing merchandise that we actually become money generating, maybe not merchandise, but you know, money generating queens. The choice of marrying or maybe you don't want to marry, right? And in case you do get married, that if for example, it doesn't work out, you're not ostracized for it and you actually have a foundation, a backbone, some sort of support that would actually help you heal throughout the process if you do happen to go through it instead of essentially stab you in the back and be judgy towards you and whisper and throw shade at you, right? Really, it's very, very important that we normalize divorce in the case that it happens. Obviously, it's not the ideal situation. Nobody wants their relationship to, you know, crumble. But if it does crumble, we have to stop judging people for it. All right, you guys, if you like this video, um, hit the like button. Why don't you subscribe? Tell me your thoughts on the matter. Um, if you don't like this video, why? Also tell me in the comment section below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.